What's up, everybody? Blake Scholar of Magic here. Today I have some massive legendary artifacts for you. We got the elf over here, the elf lady. She's making mana for us. She's turning all these artifacts into land. And then we're going to put them on her with the mana that they produce. They, we'd usually have to pay, you know, use lands or, you know, other forms of uh, mana rocks to, you know, fuel these equip costs. But with Maria, these things just become mana rocks on their own. And we can, we can Voltron the heck out of it. And it's not going to be like singularly focused on just making Maria like a Voltron-y thing. We're going to make her a threat, but we also have some awesome double strikers in here. And we'll talk about those, but let's get in right to some of these legendary artifacts um, that I kind of have on the top. And then we'll get to some of these kind of cool commander artifact uh, equipments we have, and then uh, we'll get right into it. So here is the... Lost GTA, I think this is like very, very important for any of you like your uh, equipment decks that care about, you know, doing combat damage. And especially if you have double strike in your deck in any form. Uh, and that's kind of what you're focusing on. The Lost GTA is definitely fits that. It's very affordable at that one spot. It can like help pump up your creature. I really think the, the, the main, um, you know, benefit out of this card is the target creature can't block this turn. So Bell Crew, charge counters on this as we uh, deal combat damage, and then we can remove those uh, those charge counters, and uh, and we can have when you get those benefits, you know, on top it untap a target land, target creature can't block or put a one one counter on it. A low equip cost two for one. So I love that. Additionally, we have a card like Ember Cleave. Of course, this is a card that was just a menace in standard, and uh, it's it's it could just have the same kind of impact nowadays. It's just a really really fast card and really overwhelming. Just uh, just kind of like can get you ahead when you're behind and really finish the game off. A great finisher, right? So getting that one one at a flash speed on your creature, you can really like um, have your opponent block in um, an unfavorable way. And then you can reap the benefits of that double strike damage that also tramples over once you finish off the creature that's blocking it. So it might trade for things that were unexpectedly not gonna trade in the first place or just like basically overrun like a weak block, you know, a weak creature block. So Embercleave is there. And it could also get us ahead with Maria for combat damage. We have Shadow Spear here. What a fantastic legendary equipment. Just another one where we're gonna deal combat damage again, a lot of life. And then there's that interesting text where we can like have our uh, opponent's things lose uh, hex proof or an indestructible until end of turn just by paying one. So like we'll play cards like Blasphemous Act and Beast Within. So we can get to things that maybe not like be very easy to interact with in the first place with this card. The lifelink is great too for EDH especially if we're going to be smashing into people. Here's Umazawa's Jite. This is a just great equipment where, and this was of what a viewer had mentioned, and I was like, hey, like they said this was our favorite Maria card. And I was like, well, I have that card um, in a deck, a Maria deck already, so let's, let's revisit the deck. Um, maybe do a couple of new touches to it, update it a little bit because some new cards have come out. And while wow, Umazawa's Jite is just like also one of those fabulous ones, right, where... It's going to accrue two charge counters each time you have a, an instance of combat damage. And um, you can interact with your opponent's things by giving them minus one, minus one till end of turn by removing a charge counter. You can beef up the creature that this is attached to by plus, plus, plus two, plus two. So if we put on like a double striker and they slam in, we can then redu re remove that charge counter or the charge counters and give it an additional four, four on that second swing, which is really interesting. You could also gain life with it. So it's nice. Now here's our you know, sweet, like, commander, you know, protection slash evasiveness slash buffing. So a commander's plate just is just totally fits that awesome <clears throat> criteria of getting Mary a little bit stronger. And then, of course, we'll put, like, a, you know, some a sweet equipment on this thing additionally with Mary, and then we'll really go to town. So we just love the commander plate. It's just a perfect fit for here. I think like a great thing would do to do would be like put like say for instance commander play on Mary and then an Inquisitor flail, and see how far the rabbit hole goes. You know maybe we'll get a Xenagos on Mary then and you know really start pounding into the opponents and uh, maybe dealing that da combat damage criteria. So there's definitely like ways to go about that and I feel it's, it's just a fun fit for us. 
very good for, um, you know, our combat damage um, kind of instances and has a, like, a nice risk reward to it where it um, will actually, things will do double damage to it as well um, when it is attached. So there's that start. One of the cards that kind of is glue for this particular deck is the Goblin Engineer. So let's get into that next. All right, so there it is. So what does the Goblin Engineer do for us exactly? Well, um, how I typically like to go about the Goblin Engineer is I, I like to play like two swords in the deck. And um, obviously the Sword of Forge and Frontier is my favorite. I also am fond of the Sword of Fire and Ice. Um, maybe a Sword of Feast and Famine would be like the way you'd want to go other than a Sword of Fire and Ice. But um, just because it's like a different type of protection and you would obviously open up a lot of mana for yourself as well in the meantime. So, I mean, that's another avenue you can go, but this is just what I got right now. So, um, and it's, I think it's fine. So a Goblin Engineer is great. We can entomb, like for instance, um, one of my favorite equipments, which is a, a Sword of Forge and Frontier, just like so. Get it in there, and then what we're gonna wanna do is like exchange like an artifact with this tap ability. So pay red, tap this, sacrifice, for instance, like a treasure, and have this in the graveyard, and they just swap. They just swap them out, and this comes right onto the battlefield. And that's when we're into the juice. And that's when we're having like a lot, a, a really good time is when the engineer is starting to swap these things out um, consecutively and we're getting value from it. So yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a fine choice here. It's just kind of fetches exactly what we need. And um, it's primarily the reason why I built this deck was this card in the first place. Um, really great for double strike, swing in like twice with this thing and connect with your opponent. And then all of a sudden you're exiling four cards and you can play two additional lands. So it's, it's really cool. And the buff is great too. The thing about the buff though is, is that of course we have um, some non-bows in this deck. For instance, um, the Swashbuckler Extraordinaire and Ember Cleave. Um, the, and then we also have two red equipments um, that basically would not allowed to be like this they would fall off if this thing was to be equipped uh, and vice versa you couldn't equip them onto for instance maria once um this was equipped to maria so a little give and take there a little bit of a balancing but i haven't encountered too much problems with it yet and we can always like put an ember cleave on another creature and it, it's not really too big of a deal right and typically we want to put these these swords for instance um on our double strikers so card like slicer is just like that perfect perfect double striker where you know it's uh has a pretty decent body you can pl you can play it for like a less than price and if you connect you can convert convert it and then of course once this is a creature you can actually pass it around the um the board and um it's kind of fun you can you, you may have them gain control of it you can go slicer they won't be able to sacrifice it when they have control and they'll um you know obviously will attack another opponent other than yourself so really interesting card huh guys so um it's one of those like those double strikers that like fills in the deck like on arena we don't have slicers so it's just like well we have lizard blades and we have um uh, we have the uh, Fire Action Dragon Engine, and we have Swashbuckler Extraordinaire to kind of enable Double Strike, and this is just kind of fills in that gap. So we love that. Of course, we have the Fire Action Dragon Engine here, and um, just a great card to put like one of your swords. Any of the equipments that we've mentioned so far would be fantastic with the Fire Action Dragon Engine. Just having that Double Strike is just amazing. It just really opens the game up to you and. Gives you an extraordinary amount of value, which is really enjoyable to play with when you have, you know, playing Magic, right? Here's Lizard Blades, just beautiful card for us. We can tap these things for mana if we want. We can put equipments on them. We can attach them to other, other creatures if we want to. Just so resilient. And here's the other sword that we're playing, the Sword of Fire and Ice. Not too shabby at all. Little buff there, protection from red and blue. Deal a little bit of combat damage. Draw a card, deal two damage to another uh, another uh, target of our choice. So there's that. That kind of rounds out those kind of middling, mid-priced, uh, mid-costed artifact spells. And then what we do is we kind of like round it out with um, a little bit of some soldiers, as I would say. Like we have some kind of soldiers that are going to help us there in the beginning. So... 
Um, cards like Diamond Pickaxe, these are all very low cost artifacts. When we deal combat damage, we get a benefit, for instance. Well, this one in particular is just attack, but I still, I still like it just for its low cost and it creates treasure. We're gonna have a lot of treasure energy. So this isn't the best example of the combat damage, but um, we will have ways to have extra attacks as well. And we'll get into that, but this is a better example, like a Beamtown Beatstick, equip this onto a creature. Um, once it deals combat damage, we create that treasure. So that's perfect for us where if we have this on a double striker, then all of a sudden it's, you know, producing double the treasures than it should have. So, and we love that. And it gives this thing, it's, um, gives it menace too, which is really nasty. Not too bad. And here is the gold vine pick. It's a nice two colorless one. Um, will give us a buff. The combat damage goes through, create treasure, one equip cost. Prime Blade, and just one cost. Equip two for this one, just get a 1-0 here. So maybe one of the weaker ones out of the set, but um, it is the one cost, so it does fill out our one spot. And again, once it does combat damage, creates treasure. So actually maybe it is one of the better artifacts we have. And then the Mask of Memory. You can just imagine this with like our Fire Action Dragon Engine or any of our other double strikers slamming in, and then we're gonna be drawing like four cards and discarding two, it's gonna be really cool. So two at a time, one in the bin, draw two, one in the bin, seems good. Like I said, we were, we we're gonna have ways to like get into some extra attacks as well. So this just fits in very well with like a Karlak, a very easy creature to play. And giving that first strike, all of our creatures first strike is very nice as well. So just this really sweet card for us in this. And other than this, and um, there will be one more, we'll have a combat trick um, that that also grants an extra combat step. So I thought that was sufficient and nice. And, you know, it's not like, you know, it just fills out the deck. That's all we're doing is just kind of filling in the deck so it functions really. So here's uh, Ragavan, the Nimble Pilf Pilferer. So these are like the little soldiers that are gonna like be carrying around these like, you know, uh, prying blades and gold vine picks and Beamtown beat sticks. So these little tiny guys here that this one is just amazing because it will actually create treasure and we have a lot of treasure synergies. So it's just a beautiful thing, guys. It is a beautiful thing. I mean, look at this guy. Look at this beautiful thing. Who doesn't love the wormlet? Let me know. Let me know if you have hate in your heart for this guy. How could you? You know what would be enough cool about this if this was actually a dragon? A one-costed dragon worm would be like kind of really cool. Just like really cool like dragon synergy. Maybe that's what we're missing is like a really cool like worm, worm dragon like this, you know, but really cool. Artifact comes on the battlefield. This thing is going to get stronger. We're going to gain life. It just gets Dutch death touch, death touch as long as we have three more artifacts, which we will. It's just going to be a menace for one mana. And then we have like our, we're putting all our faith into these really nasty like zero drop, zero drop artifacts. Like this one is just has one, one stats for zero. It's great. You know, we can get something equipped to this thing pretty fast and start making treasures. Same with Ornithopter, just this nasty zero too. These are just, it's so funny to say they're just nasty, but they are, they're just nasty because it's so evasive and it's just zero mana. You just slap this thing on real quick and then all of a sudden you're, you know, producing uh, treasures, you know, with um, most of the artifacts we have. So there you go, there's that. <clears throat> and then the Fire Action uh, Walker, this is another one, it's just, Zero mana, just go ahead. Mary loves zero uh, mana spells, and here they are. There we have them in creature form. Hope of another keyword, flying for one. Flying, this thing has flying. Why does it have flying? I don't know, because it's a super OP, you know? And it's just gonna get in there with our with our uh, artifacts and, you know, make more treasures and stuff and more, more production, just amazing stuff. This is another really nice guy that can kind of hold our equipments and kind of be safe. It has a built-in ward. It gets a little bit stronger each time we play, um, cast an artifact spell, so that's nice as well. So we like Patchy here. Those are like our little soldiers that are kind of going to get the job done for us. Additionally, we have like our treasure package here. So we have a professional face breaker. This is just going to produce more treasures uh, the more open op opponents we hit. This is the card, guys. This is the swashbuckler, this thing. It's just amazing with like a Ragavan, for instance. Um, in the beginning of the game, you can just give Ragavan double strike by sacrificing your treasure. And uh, and then you're really accelerating, right? And really getting a lot of value. 
Roxanne's going to turn all those treasures on, give them additional mana when they're tapped for mana. It's also going to produce meteor, meteors, which can interact with our opponent's things. Ancient Copper Dragon, just a ton of, ton of treasure con um, contribution there with its um, combat damage. Old Gnawbone, our, our creature swing and deal combat damage, make treasure. Goldspan Dragon, this will, <laughs> this will double our treasure. That's amazing. Double them. Double the treasures, thank you. And it flies and it does damage. Yes, please. And then the Fable makes a shaman that creates treasure. We can copy our other things later on and, you know, get value from that as well. Our non-legendaries, it's great. Here's Zorn. Zorn is going to double up the treasures that we create. That's sweet. The One Ring for just a massive amount of cards. Yes. A Disciple just to, like, sacrifice a creature and get, like, seven or eight cards. Yes, please. Halloween Mine to just draw tons of cards and just be tapped for mana. Another phenomenal Mary card, another fan favorite. And Return of the Wild Speaker. Just that interesting one where we have that overrun potential. We can, you know, cast this and have our non-humans get buff. Or we can just draw a bunch of cards with it. So that's fine. Um, additionally, we had a little bit more cards here. This would be like our another way to uh, access some cards would be the Great Henge, of course. So that's the end of that chapter. Here's just kind of our mega bombs here. So Maria does like the mega bombs because, you know, just, you know, produces like, by turn four, you can be casting a tally, which is pretty nice, of course. So, you know, a tally is just that kind of really sweet card that's going to give you a lot of value. Cityscape Leveler, just another fun card to cast. Xenagos to do Xenagos things and give our things more power. Get him in there and uh, hit really hard, you know, surprising amount of damage. We love that. Crater Hoof also has that surprise factor, too, where we can just kind of finish a game off really fast. That's, that's kind of what we're looking at in green, you know, primary win con. Uh, Great Train Heist. This is that new one I was talking about. This is a combat trick, but wow, it's a great one for us. I mean, we love extra combats here. Uh, we want to untap all our creatures with that first first mode, untap all creatures in control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. And then another additional plus two, creatures control get one own gain first strike until in turn, fantastic. And that additional one at the end, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature control deals combat damage to that player this turn, create a tapped uh, treasure token. It's beautiful, guys. Beautiful card. Here's a Balefire Dragon, and this is just another sweet combat damage card. And it's just perfect here. We're going to deal combat damage to the player, and um, their creature is going to get real hurt. And we love that. Thunderfoot Ballad is going to like let all our little warriors get a little bit stronger. It's just going to provide a big body. It turns on a lot of our things like the Great Henge. So we just love the Thunderfoot Ballad here. All right. So now let's get into our ramp. So here is the bird. And yeah, sweet. Just like these are just like our one mana plays that are just kind of ramp us. Bird of Paradise. Uh, Soul Ring, I have a Mox Opal in here. Uh, just because it's going to benefit from a lot of those treasures, I think it's going to be pretty easy to turn on. Uh, Emerald Medallion, that's perfect. Uh, Ruby Medallion as well. An Elf, we got a little bit of an Elf and elf, some Elf action here. Solemn Simulacrum is going to get us some some Rampage and an Urza Sog. I'll probably change this to a, probably a Delighted Halfling just to give us some uncounterability. Um, I think I do have Halfling kind of just waiting there in the wings, so... Um, yeah, that's fine. But this is all just like kind of ways to ramp us. The Solemn is just like a double whammy because it's going to fetch up a basic and then we can tap the Solemn for mana with Maria too. So we love the double whammies. Um, additionally, your your staples for the Maria. Maria, I believe, guys have to be like your Ruby Medallions because they enable Maria to be cheaper and um, they also can be tapped for mana. So it is like another kind of double whammy for you. We like double whammies. Here's Urza Saga, just a nice form of like kind of ramp. You can fetch up your soul rings or one of those other nice one mana artifacts, whatever you need. The utility is there. I love these are so these are some of the newer cards that um, I've kind of tried out recently and I just kind of fell in love with them. And um, it's just funny, like people recommend cards and you're like, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, 
you know, but maybe I want to play an artifact over it. But then it's like, oh my God, this card is so good. Like you could fetch up like your crater hoof or whatever and, you know, draw with your one ring. And then all of a sudden, like you have like a win con posed to the table. So yeah, uh, we love Worldly Tutor. That's just a fantastic card, guys. Just fetch up that creature, put it on the top of your library. Rhythm of the Wild really grew on me. I just feel like it just has to be consideration for any of my Gruel decks with creatures. They become uncounterable once this is on the battlefield and they can, they can non-token creatures um, enter with a 1-1 counter on them or with haste. Oof. Smuggler Surprise is also one of those just ultimate like I can't believe I get this most value. It's like an Elvish Piper on steroids. It's like a one-shot thing, but it's just like, okay, I pay six into this and I can just bust out two creatures of my choice for my hand. It's like, whoa, that's that's really good, you know? And then our um, kind of our staply interaction here, and I did add also a um, Spiteful Banishry because of the treasure production, right? So we have our Blasphemous Act here, just a nice board wipe, Stump Stomp for some a land or just some interaction with dealing damage from one of our creatures to another. Here's Spiteful Banditry. Just really good one, right? We're just kind of, um, you know, selectively board wiping and also making those treasures each time of our one of our opponent's creatures die on each of the turns. It seems really good. Here's Bridgeward's Battle. King can just be a land or, you know, we could just go ahead and have one of our creatures get 2-2 to the line of turn and fight another creature. Seems good. Beast Within. So we're just getting into that sweet, sweet interaction where we can just remove a permanent give the opponent a 3-3 but wow like what a what a game changing card this could just really just fit fit that right that right when you need it you know guys it's that right when you need it so there's that here's the vandal blast another sick card just i have a good base you know like i i joined the dojo like about you know a couple years ago CGB Dojo and like I love the EDH form like and they're like they introduced me to like all these sweet cards they're like oh, well you got to play Beast Within you got to play Vandal Blast you got to play Blas Blasphemous Act and it's like those cards have come have won me so many games it's like so like ridiculous how many cards that those cards have have given me like you know so much so much joy to play with here's the Cavern of Souls just like these are our mana so it's just like these are like you know, functioning lands that kind of have a nice effect for us. For instance, this will create uncounterability for a creature type of our choice, which is amazing. Um, so we, we do like the Halfling too, so we'll have to put that in. Den of the Bugbear, really nice. Um, these are our man lands here. Nice art there for the lair. Mycosynth, the copy our artifacts, our channel lands to create tokens and to interact with our opponent's artifacts or enchantments. Fantastic. Or non-basic lands, Boseju. Shatter Scroll for more interaction. Turn Timber to like perhaps fetch a, a big creature out of the battlefield. Yava Maya to make all the uh, fix our mana. We have a bunch of about seven basic forests and about, about about the same amount of mountains. And then we just get into our duels here. We have a couple surveil lands, and we have some rainbow lands with the City of Brass. Command Tower Spire of Industry is fantastic, right? Firelit Thicket a Prismatic Vista to fetch up a basic of our choice. Pathways, Gorge, Mana Confluence, like just that City of Brass kind of connection. Stomping Ground and Wooded Foothill. So guys, that is the um, Artifact deck. That is the Artifact Equipment Double Strike. Extra Crombat shenanigans. And um, we have to get the Halfling in, of course. But that's the deck. And um, I'll definitely be posting the list. It might take a hot moment, but um, I will, guys. I promise. And I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.